Today's video is about thrift flips I made under $5. Welcome to my channel. If you have not seen me before, my name is Dwaja and I make DIY home decor videos. Those are usually small scale projects, uh, which I try to get inspired from some of the high end decor websites or probably just my own ideas. So if you like to watch those type of videos, you will definitely enjoy the content that I posted on my channel. Don't forget to check out other videos on my channel right after this video. It's going to come in the suggestion as well at the end of this video. And let's get started with today's video. Today's video is about thrift flips. Last time when I went to thrift store, and if you have seen my last video, if you have watched my last, last video, you probably know that I, I made a throw pillow under $6 from thrifted products. And that was an amazing outcome. So right at that time, I could actually spot two products that I can make thrift flips on. One was um, oil lantern in a lamp shape and the second was actually a wood bowl. Wood bowl is pretty easy to get in any thrift store and they're pretty affordable too and sometimes you actually can get a really nice wood quality. It can be teak wood or it can be mango wood. It's clearly like it's depend on luck but the material was unpolished wood bowl that I could get uh, was two dollars and 49 cents. I did some research and I tried to make oil lantern and then I was like maybe I'm not gonna use it. So let, let me just make a decor accent. That will do the job. I That lamp that I could actually find, um, I tried to make uh, make it in a more of a Scandinavian type, type of a decor uh, with more neutral and textured product. So both products that I could actually get from between two to three dollars and they turned out amazing. I absolutely enjoyed the process and they turned out actually better than I imagined. Wood bowl, I actually, uh, could uh, finish and polish the product and I made a wood candle out of that. So I hope you will enjoy it too. Let me know how do you like the video in the comments and let me get started with today's video. I visited Valley Village a couple weeks ago to find some stuff for my last video that was for DIY throw pillow. While I was doing my research on clothing and some home decor items, I found this beautiful candle that looks like a lamp for just three dollars this entire thing is actually probably eight inches in height it's super cute to be a lamp and i immediately could figure out this is actually a candle this is an oil candle that comes with the three sections one is the bottom section that you can put oil in and you can also put wick which is made from cotton or probably some kind of a cloth or a thread and then you pass it through the steel holder that I just detach and then you put a lampshade on top. Usually lampshade is not there just because of the design it is there. Now to make some kind of DIY just to make it look elevated and nice I decided to provide it some texture. Now for texture I did my favorite technique is to do the texture paste and put it on the lampshade. So I mixed up one portion of white cement and one portion of white school glue, which is Elmer's school glue, and mixed it up really well. Now that paste was a little bit thick, so I added a one teaspoon of water and it was perfectly fine. And then I started spreading this texture paste onto the lampshade only. I, would, I did not want it, the bottom part to be much more textured because it already has a ribbed pattern on that. So I wanted to provide texture just on the lampshade to make it look more elevated and uh, more dimensional. And since I did not add much of a water in the paste, it was drying out very quickly. Fortunately, the piece itself was very small. I did not have to worry about it. But if you are working on a bigger piece, you probably have to work a bit faster in order to work around with the paste. I didn't want it to pro I did not want it to provide one stroke all over the lamp. I wanted it textured, so I moved my knife here and there just to give some extra texture on the lamp because I'm going to paint it later on. So I didn't want it to paint to hide the flaws. And I made 
and I made sure that every corner of the lampshade is covered on the textured piece. So when I actually shoot the product, paint the product, it doesn't come out uneven. Now for the bottom part, I was a bit confused because it already had a texture, but I was trying to match it with the top part of the candle. And the entire thing that I bought was perfectly fine. It was in a mint condition, so I did not want it to do much on that. I wanted to leave it the way it is, on its original shape. And there was also a holder that was silver, so I wasn't sure what to do with that. And then I came up with an idea that I had this paint that I bought like six or eight months ago to paint a furniture and that was a really nice neutral beige tone and I had some paint left. You see how beautiful the shade is? It's not too wide, it's not too yellow, it's perfect amount of beige that I wanted to use for some kind of a Scandinavian decor. So I grabbed a paint and mixed that up with a baking soda. It's our favorite favorite hack to work with. And I was going to use two coats of paint with that, so I didn't want it to make it too thick with the baking cane soda. I, I can obviously change that later on in the second coat, but I didn't want it to go thicker on the first coat. So this was the consistency of the first coat, and I painted the whole bottom with that color. Now you can see the texture is not that elevated as much as on the actual product. And I will be able to mix match that up with the lampshade as well. So this is how the bottom part was looking like after I painted that. And I let, I let that dry for about 2-3 to three hours before I make the second coat. To match the shade on the bottom and the top both, I painted the lampshade onto this with the same color, same baking soda mixture. And that was the reason I didn't want to make it too thick because my lampshade already has a texture on that. Just because of the texture, I had to run a little, little more extra brush strokes to make it look perfect. And I also wanted to make sure that I go with the lighter coat so it doesn't hide the texture. And I was done with that project. When I make this kind of a thrip flip videos, I usually have one of my favorite in the videos. If I make three, one of them is my favorite and it usually goes like that. But for this video, both of them are my absolute favorite. So for this bowl, it was $2.49 and it was in a mint condition. Someone never really used it and when I initially bought it, but I probably thought that I'm just gonna polish that and uh, condition the wood and use it as a trinket tray for my keys coins because I don't really don't have anything for that but then I changed my mind so I conditioned the bowl I sanded it really nice because it had some imperfection on the edge because someone really did not use that and donated that so I had to make sure that the top layer is gone so I sanded that really well and then conditioned that with the wood wax and that's when the thing happened. I changed my mind because conditioned bowl was way too nice to be a trinket tray. It was so good. And of course, I was going to make a candle. But before I do that, I had to make sure that the wax is entirely dry, soaked up in the wood. So I had to wait for 24 hours to make a candle. For that, obviously, I had, I had the wax melted already i had a candle wick that i stick that up with a glue gun in the center of the bowl but at this point i was trying to make it more like an aesthetic candle something that i'm probably not going to burn just going to use it as an aesthetic object so for wax i have used soy wax and i added pine fragrance tea tree oil and a little bit of lavender just to mix up all the fragrances so it can give me a nice winter vibes and I filled half of the bowl, even more than half, with the wax. So my idea is to fill the bowl entirely with the soy wax. And on the top, I put some toppers, which is like dried oranges, rosemary, and some peppercorns. So for that, to 
I had to fill the bowl with soybeans, more than half of the bowl with soybeans, and let it harden. And then I add a tiny thin layer of wax one more time, and, I, and then I put toppers on that. So when the wax get hardened, it all can stick together. For toppers, I had some dried oranges that I made for Christmas. I had some dried rosemary as well, and some peppercorns. So this is the time that I add my toppers. So I added last layer of the wax to that. It's the same wax that I used before. So my next step was to arrange the toppers that I was going to add. I wanted to make it more like a static Pinterest space, still make it look organic. So it was a little bit of a work that I had to go through some arrangements before I actually place it. So I made some tiny pieces of orange and arranged it in a way that I can accommodate some other rosemary and peppercorns as well. I started with orange because they are big chunks. It's hard for them to arrange in the end of the procedure. So I started with the big, bigger objects first and then I went ahead for rosemary and then I added the smallest that is peppercorns. So for rosemary, I couldn't add the whole strand. So I had to cut some rosemary leaves and I had to arrange it in a way. I think this was the way easier than I used the entire strand at once. It was way easier using rosemary like this. So as you can see here, I'm using a very small amount of rosemary and trying to tuck it into the semi-hard wax. And that actually gives me a bit of confidence that the rosemary will not fall out since it's a small portion. And the lastly, the wax was almost hard. I added a peppercorns and that elevated the entire look of the candle. I got this idea from Pinterest, but I'm pretty sure there are some small businesses who sell this kind of candles, but their fragrances are way, way much better, way better and much nicer than I have used because I've used the store-bought oils and fragrance fragrances. They probably make their own. Yeah, but that was it. And that's my second DIY. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel because that will help me to create my own YouTube community. So once again, thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.